One of you has asked me to help with this question involving indices. Uh, and as you can see, this is a past paper question, so it is important to give credit and say thanks to Cambridge Examinations for this is their questionnaire. I did not create this, but we are here together uh, to help each other to understand maths, okay? So here we go. The first question, and this is clearly a paper two question, by the way. It says the square root of 32 equals 2 to the power p. Find the value of p. Okay, so this is about indices. Now, the strategy needs to be like this. I have to rewrite, in this case, my left side of the equation. I've got to rewrite it as a term with a base of 2. Because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to let it say, for instance, 2 to the power 5. Eh? So if, I would re if this would be the same as 2 to the power 5. So the base is 2 to the power 5. And then that would equal 2 to the power p. And then I can make the conclusion that 5 equals p, yeah, or p equals 5, yeah, so that is my strategy, okay, so I have to rewrite it, let me get rid of that, I'm going to rewrite square root of 32 as something of 2 to the power something, okay, now let's have a go, um, let's start with 32, yeah, what is 32, well, hopefully you realize that 32 is 2 times 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 equals 2 to the power p. Yeah, so the square root of 2 to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there we go, equals 2 to the power p. Yeah, so I'm just manipulating the question so I can answer it. Now, good, I have my term with a base of 2, but there still is this square root sign. Now, Make sure to have seen all my videos about indices, yeah? but just to remind you, I've said in the past that x to the power a half, yeah? so a fractional index, is the same as the square root of x. Yeah? The square root, because that's a 2 and an x to the power 1, which is x. So the numerator of a fractional index goes there, that's the power then of your base, and the denominator of a fractional index is yeah, the root you're going to take. So what is going on here in this question? Well, it is a square root. Let me just put a 2 there. Yeah, We never write a 2, really, if it's a square root, because it's the most uh, yeah, common one. But it still helps me that I know, well, that 2 then becomes my denominator. So the 5 is my numerator. All right. So let me rewrite it again. So it's going to be uh, 2 to the power 5 over 2 equals 2 to the power p. Yeah, so the 5 goes to the numerator, yeah, and uh, 2 goes to the denominator. And then I can make the conclusion, considering the bases are the same, I can say, so p equals 5 over 2, and that is 2 and a half. Okay, so p equals 2 and a half, and that is your final answer. So let me just put that there for you, p equals two and a half. Okay, very good. The next question, now let me try to get rid of this now. Look at that, that's, that's technology. Oh, P two and a half also gone. I'll, I'll, I'll write it there again. P equals two and a half. It's technology, guys, it's amazing. All right, um, let's have a look. Next question. One over eight, but then the cube root of it equals two to the power Q, find the value of Q. Now, a similar question as we've just done, yeah? I can only find the value of Q if I rewrite this term in something with a base of 2 as well. So 2 to the power something equals 2 to the power Q, then that Q equals that something, and equals that index on the other side. Now there are two ways of doing this. Let me show you the first one. Um, I could say, well, that is the cube root, then what shall I do? The cube root of 1 over 2 to the power 3. Yeah, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 equals 2 to the power q. So that is the cube root of 2 to the power minus 3, if you like. Yeah, equals 2 to the power q. So please, again, in other videos, I explain negative indexes. Okay, a negative index. And now, again, a fractional index. Um, and a negative one, so that, or a fractional, this is not a fractional index yet, but it will become a fractional index, minus three over three equals two to the power Q, yeah? So two to the power minus one equals two to the power Q. So how much is Q? Q equals minus one. Very good, because Q equals minus one, because the bases now are the same, 
Okay, so I again rewrite the 1 over 8 into something with a base of 2, 1 over 2 to the power 3. Yeah, but this is not a fraction, that is 2 to the power Q, so 2 to the power minus 3. Okay, so um, and then I turn this, this cube root into a fractional index. Yeah, like I just showed you in the previous question how to do that. And minus 3 over 3, that's minus 1, so Q is minus 1. Now there's one different way of doing it. Um, you could actually put in your calculator, so in your calculator the cube root of 1 over 8, and then your calculator is going to tell you, well, that is a half. So your calculator is going to say a half. So you write down a half equals 2 to the power Q. And 1 over 2, and the 2 to the power of 2 is a 1, would be the same as 2 to the power minus 1 equals 2 to the power Q. All right, because that 1 becomes a negative, yeah, if I uh, yeah, get rid of that fraction. Eh? So 2 to the power minus 1. It's the same as 1 over 2 to the power 1, okay? So 2 to the power minus 1 equals 2 to the power Q. So Q equals minus 1. Indeed, that's what I also got with, a, yeah, with an approach that I didn't, uh, for which I didn't need my calculator for. Okay, I hope that, that was helpful, okay? You can also ask me your question. Uh, it's all for free uh, on explainingmaths.com. Uh, you will find loads of resources there which you can use as well. Uh, please like and share this video if it was useful to you, okay? And uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, the last thing I just have to tell you is well done for having a look at this video and good luck with your mass revision. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.